Hello my friends, so I just published a course titled Advanced Men Stack Authentication and like I always do in all my courses, I try to make them very practical and based on real world style of programming, what is, you know, acceptable out there. Um, but don't take my word for it, just see the demo in the next um, section. So what I've done is I've created a $10 discount link um, for you so that you can access the course at a discount and I'll leave a link in the description of this video so that you can take advantage of it. All right, see you in the next one then. All right, guys, so welcome to the course. This is just a demo of what we're going to build um, in the course. So it's just going to be a very simple um, layout and we're going to have the registration, the login system. So I'm going to start from the registration. So in the registration page, we have um, a password strength checker. So let me just start by just entering some details. So here I'm going to enter in my gmail and then i'm going to choose the password now i'll click on this icon here to show the password that i'm typing so let me just say at so you see here that as i typed a special character immediately it was checked here from x red x to green check all right so you see also as i start typing out other characters when these conditions are met then the check mark is also changing so that's um, what this does here so anyway i'm just going to add my zeno and i'll just a one two three and as you can see everything has you know checked now there's another thing we did here such that you know you want the user to be able to actually type out the confirm password field most users just prefer to paste it because you know they don't want to stress themselves however they could be wrong so if I try to paste here, we get a notification that I cannot paste into this input field. I'm going to show you how to implement that. Anyway, let me just type out the password again. So I'll say at and Zeno12. One thing I want to show you is that we also have um, form verification here. So if I try to register with this password, not matching. Watch what happens. You see, passwords do not match. So all sort of form verifications for the front end part and also for the back end part. So, but anyway, I'm just going to put the password complete and I'll just click on register. Okay, so we are in here and as you can see, we get this notification registration successful and verification email sent. So what that means is that this user is required to verify their account. So if you look here, you see that we have this notification bar that says to verify your account check your email for a verification link so i'm just going to go to that email and it usually takes a couple of seconds so let me just refresh the email here aha so we have our email here so i'm just going to click on see verify your account i'll click on this email and open it up and inside of this email we have a link uh, a button rather so it says hello my name and then please use the URL below to verify your account. This link is valid for 24 hours. Now that's actually a thing. If you don't get to verify your account with this link after 24 hours, you're going to need to resend and generate another one. So I'll just come here and click on um, verify account. And then it's just going to come here and show me a verification page. So in this verification page, now I get to click this button to verify my account. So if I do that, then you see here account verification successful now i'd like you to know that this process is actually intelligent such that if i try to verify my account again right it will tell me that the user is already verified so you see now if i for any reason go back to the profile page here you see that we no longer have this red notification bar that we you know had before and of course if i refresh this page then this notification bar is going to disappear why because the user has been verified now great so now each user has a profile like some data about their account so if you see here this particular user has a user role which is subscriber then we have a default avatar they can choose to change that so what i'm going to do is i'm going to just try to change all the details about this user just to be sure that everything is in place i'll click on choose file and then i'm just going to choose a file this one is just fine and then i'll click on open and immediately you select the image you have a preview of that image here isn't that nice also we're going to come here and change the name to maybe just a woman and the email is set that you cannot change the email of course that can be you know changed by you but that's the settings we have here we don't want the email to be changed 
also you can choose a phone number and some you know bio about the user so here i'm just going to say full stack developer all right and then i just click on update so let's see what happens when we try to update So we immediately get a notification that the user has been updated and if you come down here and check you see that um, the details of the user has been changed so this is the user the new image the name of the user and everything we just added here great now the user also has the capacity to change their password if they are logged in so if i come here for example i'll first need to enter my current password then i need to now add a new password so new password confirm new password and then i can change my password so let's just quickly do that i think i had the password in my clipboard so this is my current password right this is the new password i want to change so i'm just going to add the uh, number four just to make it different okay then let's confirm the password oh okay i need to type it out so let me click so that i can see it so at Zeno one two three four yeah and then i'll click on change passwords watch what happens so we get this loading spinner and it tells me that my password has been changed and an email was actually sent to that user that the password was changed all right so first off i'm going to try to log in with this former password so the old password i changed let's try to log in with it and see if all right so you see we get a notification here invalid email or password which actually shows us that the password was changed however i'm going to try here and add my the, uh, number four to and then i'll try to log in and as you can see let me update that we are now logged in so it's actually a good user experience that when a user changes their password you redirect them to the login page so that they can update their password in you know their browser's uh, password manager all right so let me go back to this my email here and check if the email was actually sent great so you see i get an email that my password was changed so i'll open that and here it says hello my name so you see that this is actually dynamic each user is going to get their name here this is to notify you that your account password was changed if you did not initiate this please reset your password and then there's a reset button here so it's like a security uh, implementation such that when a user's password is changed you immediately want to notify them if that change did not come from them then they should they can easily reset their password all right so let's let's move out of this place and let's come back here so i'm going to log out of um, this account and let's see some other functionality so i'm going to log out and i'll log in as an admin account so let me quickly look for that Aha, so this is an admin account i'm logging in with and as you can see as an admin we have something different that the regular user does not have we have access to this users tab here so if i click on users tab you see here that we now have this dashboard kind of where we now have details about the user so for example we have some statistics we have um, a total users is six the users that have verified their account two unverified users four suspended users one great now let me scroll down and let's see about the user so this is the users tab here and you can see the list of all the users in our um on our system we also have this pagination here that we can you know use to break the users into a list great so now for each user we can actually change their user role so we have subscriber subscriber and one of the user is suspended we um, this account that I logged in with is an admin account. So if you come here, you see that we have this admin here. That's the user. Great. So now let me show you. We can also search by the way. So for example, I can search for Zeno and then you see all the accounts that have both Zeno either in their name or in their email. Yeah. So that's a live search um, that we implemented there. Anyway, what I wanted to show you is that we can change the role of the user. So currently, this user's role is subscriber. If I click on this drop down here, I can see the various user roles that I can change. So I can suspend this user. The moment you suspend the user, they're not going to have access to do many things on the system. For example, let's say updating their um, profile, they would not be able to do that. So several other things they will not be able to do. All right. So, but I'm going to change this user from um i'll just change this user to an admin actually so admin and then i'll click on this checkbox here so you see we get 
um, user role updated to admin and an email was actually sent to that user so just to confirm I'm gonna go back to my email and let's see if we actually okay great so you see it actually entered in real time so account role changed I'll open that and let's see what the message is so it says my name this is to notify you that your account status has been changed please log in for confirmation so and the user can choose to log in so you see there are quite a number of things that we're going to learn and one of them is automated email sending so you notice that when I perform a particular task an email is automatically sent and is specific to the users that are involved great so what I got to do is I want to show you how the Google login actually works and I would want to do that with this same user so for now I'm just gonna delete the user just to show you that a user can be deleted so I'll click on this um, trash icon and then I'm gonna click on delete and that user will be deleted from our system great now let me log out of this admin account so I'll log out and I'll just register with Google so let's log in with Google so the way we set up this Google login is that if the user is not registered if they are logging in for the first time it's gonna register that user and log them in however if they are logged in then it's just gonna log them in and the data about that user is going to be synced with our database so let me show you so I'll click on this guy here and I'm just gonna click on this email Aha, so you see now I have logged in with Google and the data we have here is actually fetched from Google so this is my image in, on my Google and this is the name the email and then the bio and the phone number is actually we set it we set a default so you can do whatever you want with that but we just set a default here because I didn't want to leave it empty so that's how the Google login thing works and we can also change our password because when you're logging in with google you have to be signed into google first but you can also set your password here and if you set your password here you will be able to log in with that gmail and a password which is the one you set here all right so um that's about it for um this demo because i don't want it to be too long but i'm going to log out of here and log in as an admin one more time just to show you that that Google login that we did now is actually added to our list of users and is synced in our own database so I'll come here and as you can see we have this latest user which is Zeno Aquareva and it has been added to our own database even though the user logged in with Google alright so I think um, I think this should do for the demo there are so many other things that we're going to talk about um, authorization and stuff like that now what if the user is unable to remember their password right so I'm just going to log in with um, reset password with this particular user so first off I need to log out and then I'm just going to click on the reset password it will require me to enter in my email so I'll do that and I'll click on get reset email so you see it tells me that an email has been sent so once more let's come back here and let's check it out voila so you can see here that we have this password reset request email I would open that and it gives me a link that I can click on to reset my password of course it tells me this reset link is only valid for 30 minutes so you're gonna learn how to set validity for um, links that you send to your user as well so I'll click on reset email and let me close this one up okay great so now I get this form here where I can enter a new password and confirm that password now I'm just gonna enter my at so let, let me click here so that I can see what I'm doing Zeno123 remember we've not set any password for the user because we created the user with Google login alright so I'm just gonna set it to this password I'll come down and then I'll paste that in oh I did not implement the do not paste here right but it's still fine so let me click on reset password and see if it works so I'll click on reset you know what let me make this you know one two three four five so that it's completely different so there's no misunderstanding anywhere so it tells me that my password reset was successful and I should log in and I also get the okay let me just close this all right great so I'm just gonna come here and enter in that Gmail and let's okay so one two three four and I'll just add five or you know what let me just enter one two three four and you see here that it tells us that email invalid email or password but if I should enter five now and then I click on login then you see here that I'm able to log in successfully which is great now there's one more thing I want us to 
um, check before we start the course fully and that is the device security okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a Chrome um, a Firefox browser which generally is going to be what is known as a different user agent okay so when a user tries to log in with either a completely different browser or a different device that is known as a different user agent so I'm going to click on login here and I'll try to log in with my um, Gmail so this one and I'm gonna add the correct password so Zeno one two three four five sorry five and I'll click on login let's see what happens when we try to do that oh I think I want to shrink this browser a bit it's too big okay so this is fine all right I'll click on login and let's see what happens aha so you see because I am logging in from a different user agent it's telling me that I should check my email for a login code because an access code was sent to my email so this is one of the things that you need to be able to know how to implement if you're going to build a standard secure login system so another condition we can implement this um, two-factor authentication is if the user is accessing the account from a different country but this one I just use a different user agent which actually covers you know everything anyway I'm gonna go back to my email and let's check to make sure that we actually got that email so I'll come here and let me go back and as you can see we had we have this login access code email so I'm just gonna click on this guy and let's see what we have here so we have this access code 265236 permit me to just copy it I'll copy that and then I'll go back to my Firefox browser and I'm gonna paste that code in but let's actually make sure that this process is also intelligent I'll try to paste I'll delete the six and I'll click on proceed to login and you see here it says access code must be six characters all right let's try to put in something that is wrong so let's just put one and proceed to login and it tells me that the, it we have an incorrect login code please try again so you see it actually is an intelligent process I'll delete the one and put the six that we have and then I'll click on proceed to login aha so you see I've been able to log in successfully into that account what that means is that every time I try to log in from this particular user agent then I will not need to verify um, I will not need to go through the two-factor authentication anymore so this is some really advanced concept as far as I'm concerned and you are not going to find a lot of tutorials that will teach you everything that I'm going to cover in this course all right so that's about it for this one so let's proceed in the next video thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one